In this section, I'll be introducing you to our primary measures for portfolio performance assessment. Uh, I'll talk about, first off, time-weighted versus dollar-weighted returns, and then in a follow-on video, I'll introduce you to our, our more specific performance metrics like the Sharpe Ratio, uh, Jensen's Alpha, etc. And then in our third video on this section, I'll discuss value at risk, market timing, and how to perform style analysis. So let's get going. Okay, so as promised in this video, I'm going to talk about how we calculate the performance of a portfolio over a period of time. I'll start off with time-weighted returns, and then I'll discuss dollar-weighted returns. And then finally, I'll provide you an example to lock in the calculation of both returns. Accurate return calculation allows us to compare our performance to that of other portfolios and the benchmark. If our portfolio is underperforming, this will be revealed when we calculate our return over the period. If our portfolio is exposed to the same amount of risk as another portfolio and still underperforms, a rational investor who expects our portfolio to continue to underperform would naturally want to liquidate their investment in our portfolio and invest in some other portfolio. The two return methods I'm about to show you here are important because we'll often have to make trades during the investment period. We need to take those trades into account. We'll start with the time-weighted return method, and then we'll use the dollar-weighted return method. Sometimes the dollar-weighted returns are called money-weighted returns. Uh, I'll, I'll use those interchangeably, but note that I'll only be using a single security in my examples. But you can use these techniques when you're calculating the return on managed funds like mutual funds that only issue shares. Now, the time-weighted return calculation involves two steps. First, you calculate the total return on the portfolio at each time period, and we calculate the total return using our holding period return formula, mean, meaning that we add the value of the portfolio at the end of the period, or P1, to any income we receive during the period, minus the initial value of the portfolio. Then we divide by the initial value of the portfolio. Once you have the return on the portfolio during each period, you can calculate the geometric average return over the entire period. The geometric average return formula involves us adding 1 to every return, multiplying the 1 plus returns together, taking that product to the power of 1 divided by the number of periods, and subtracting 1. Now the final point I'll say here is that to calculate the return using the time-weighted me method, we really are only calculating the return on a single share. So regardless of the number of shares we have here, we're only calculating the, the average return on a single share over the holding period. So let's take a look at an example. So in this example, we have three points in time. Time period zero, the start of our return period analysis, and then time period one, where we have our first dividend being paid, and then time period two, where we have our second dividend being paid. So in time period zero, we buy one share for $50. That's it. In time period one, we buy a second share of stock, but right now the, the share price of that stock is $53, not $50. And we receive a $2 cash dividend on the share we initially purchased. And then finally in time period two, we get dividends on both shares. So those dividends, those $2 dividends total $4 of dividends, and then we sell our shares for $54 each or $108 total. So. Let's calculate the time-weighted return on this portfolio that we've invested in. So here, first step is to calculate the holding period return for each period of time. So we have two time periods, the period from 0 to 1 and the period from 1 to 2. And we have essentially the calculations for these returns right here. So notice here that our initial investment was $50 per share. Our price of the stock at time period one was $53, and our dividend per share was $2. Divide by initial investment, this gives us a return of 10%. In time period two, or the, the second period, our initial investment, or our, our starting price for this stock was $53, same as it was at the end of the first period. And we end in time period two with a share price of $54 a share, and we had a $2 dividend. And we divide that all by the initial starting price, so our return here is 5.66%.
The second step is to use the geometric average return. And so what we do here is we add one to each of these returns. So 1.1 and 1.0566. We take the product of those and then take that to the power of one divided by the number of returns that we have. So we have two returns here. We have two periods. So we're taking the product of these one plus returns to the power of one divided by two. And then we subtract one to get rid of the principal that we added here. And so our time weighted return is 7.81%. So notice here, I know I've said it already in this video, but we're only calculating the return on a single share. We don't really care how many shares we bought in the second period or at time period one. We just care about the return on a single share of stock. All right, now the dollar weighted return method or the money weighted return method is a little different. And honestly, I think it's a lot simpler. Essentially, we use the IRR formula. What we do is we calculate the cash inflows and outflows at each period in time, and then we just use IRR. So we take our, our initial cash flow, our initial investment, and then we calculate the total cash flow. So, uh, you know, any cash inflows, any cash outflows from uh, payments used to purchase shares, any dividends we receive. Uh, that sum is going to be our cash flow one. We do that for cash flow two and so on and so forth for every period. And then we just discount all of our future cash flows back to the present using some uh, internal rate of return. Basically, we're going to uh, set the, the PV equal to uh, zero. All right, so uh, let's look at that same example again. Okay, so same example. We have two time periods, and we start off with one share, and then by the end of the period, uh, or the second period, we will have purchased a second share, and we'll receive a $4 dividend. All right, so here we have our calculations. So in time period zero, we purchased one share of stock for $50. So that's a cash outflow from our perspective. Uh, so that goes right here as a negative 50. Next, in time period one, we got a $2 dividend for the share of stock we already owned. And then we paid for an additional share of stock, which at that point was trading for $53. So our total cash flow at time period one is two minus 53 or negative $51. In time period three, we got two dividends, each $2, and so that's where that $4 comes from. And then we sold both of our shares, which at that point were trading for $54 each, so that's where that $108 comes from. Uh, so all told, here are our cash flows. We set the other side equal to zero, and then we can take our initial cash flow over to the other side and solve for our, our return. This is our IRR. Each of these Rs will be the same. And so our R here, our, our dollar weighted return, our IRR, is 7.117%. This is our dollar weighted return. And there we go. This is why I prefer the dollar weighted return method. It's much easier, especially if you have access to, let's say, Excel or a BA2 calculator. All right, let's go through one final example in an Excel spreadsheet to kind of lock everything in. And for this example, I'm going to use Ford as my company. Obviously, these are fictitious numbers, but uh, let me move over to the Excel spreadsheet and show you what I have. Okay, so we're over here on the Excel spreadsheet, and this example is a touch more complicated. We have three periods instead of two, and so this is really why I, I like to use Excel when I'm calculating these returns, uh, mostly because it's, you know, you can have many, many periods, and I wouldn't want to do this by hand or even with a BA2 calculator. Okay, so let's start off with a time-weighted return method. So with this time-weighted return method, like I said, we're going to be using or calculating the return on a single share of stock. So to start off here, I'll work in these three cells because we'll have three returns. We have essentially three periods, the period from 0 to 1, period from 1 to 2, and the period from 2 to 3. So I'll calculate the return from 0 to 1 right here, and I'm just using the holding period return. So here we receive or we purchase one share for $100, and we that 
price of that share a year from then is 110, so 110 minus 100. And at the end of that year, we get a $10 dividend. And then we divide by the initial price. From time period times one to two, so our initial stock price at one is 110, and our ending share price is 115. So 115 minus 110 plus the $10 per share dividend, and then we divide by the initial price at the start of the period, so 110. Finally, we have the period between two and three. So we start off the period with each share price, with each share being worth 115, and we end with each share being worth 120. So 120 minus 115 plus the $10 per share dividend divided by the initial price, 115. So there we go. And I suppose I have these out of order, but we'll just work with the time-weighted return right now. So like I said, once you have your individual returns, you calculate the geometric average return over the entire period. And so I'll show you two different ways to do this. We can start off by just taking uh, one plus each of these returns. So we could do something like one plus this one times one plus the second return times one plus our third return, close our ultimate brackets and take that all to the power of one divided by three because we have three periods and then we subtract one. And so our time-weighted return would be 15, or average return, would be 15.52% per year. Uh, obviously, this is a little tedious, so let me show you a, a quicker way, especially if you have a longer time series of returns. So what you can do is, in a separate column, you can add one to each of these, and then you can use the geomean formula and just highlight your one plus returns and subtract one. And you get the exact same answer, you know, once you round it. Uh, but that geo mean formula, it's very handy if you have a very, very long stream of returns. Okay, next, dollar weighted returns. So here, remember, what we're doing is we're calculating the cash flow, the total cash flow at each point in time, and then we're going to take the IRR. So here, what I'll do is I'll start with the initial cash flow, and initially we pay $100 for one share of stock. So here, in the first period, we have a $100 cash outflow. In the second period, we're again paying $110 for a share of stock, so that's a cash outflow of 110, but we also receive a $10 dividend. So there we go. In time period two, we pay 115 for a share of stock, so minus 115, and then we also receive two dividends. So those are ca positive cash inflows, so plus 20. And then in the final step, we receive a $30, or $30 worth of dividends for the three shares that we had, plus we sell each share for $120, or $360 total. So there we go. Okay, and the final step is to use the IRR function. And we start from the first time period, or the, the time period zero, and go all the way down. And there's our dollar weight of return. Easy as that. So once you have both of these, this is the point where we'd want to compare our portfolio or our, our stock to that of another uh portfolio or stock. So if our benchmark is the S&P 500 index, we'd want to see whether our portfolio outperformed or underperformed the, uh, you know, the S&P 500. All right, so let's summarize. Well, first off, we discussed two methods to calculate portfolio returns, the time-weighted and the dollar-weighted return formulas. Uh, also remember that sometimes you'll hear the dollar-weighted return formula referred to as the money-weighted return formula. Uh, so the big difference there is that time-weighted returns calculate the return on a single share for each period, 
whereas the dollar weighted returns use the IRR function. And so with that, I'm going to conclude. And if you have any questions, obviously, please feel free to reach out. And if not, I'll see you in class.